right, so it's around time. Let me get started. Hello, if there's anybody out there. <coughs> um, this is the weekly Houdini tutorial that I've been doing, and this is the 35th episode. I've been doing like this for 35 weeks. Wow. And the topic today is to create the one that I'm showing right now, more like a infinite maze generation generator or animation <coughs> uh, using Houdini. Mostly using a solver, but uh, less code, less code amount than the last uh, video, last tutorial. Last one was a lot of coding, but uh, this time I think it will be a bit less and it's pretty much for beginners, I think, who is new to Dini Vex coding. So let's get started. Just gonna move this away and I'm gonna show you how to create such a randomly flipping, randomly rotating maze wall <clears throat> from scratch. Okay, let's do this. Hello everybody. Right now I'm gonna go create from geometry node as always and what I always do is to create a new node first, named, name it, so that I can understand that this is the one that I'm come back to, to control the parameters that I want to control later on. And I'm gonna name a controller and color it with some custom color. Right now, uh, let's start by the base. Let's start by creating a base. I'm gonna just use the grid. The one that I'm gonna show you works great on grid because when you rotate, what I'm going to do is to rotate the edge of each grid, each grid cells 90 degrees randomly at random frames, and that's all kind of that's all what I'm doing in this tutorial <coughs> basically, uh, in terms of choosing randomness and so on. So it's going to be pretty easy for the random pattern. Now, when it comes to create some kind of a more geometrical <clears throat> motion graphics like animations, then you need to have some control. And if I have time, I'll show you how to do that as well. Right, so first of all, what I would like to do is to control the size of this grid. So let's say, let's have some parameters for the number of rows and columns. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the edit parameter interface and choose just gonna say grid num for both rows and columns and set the range from 0 to 100 making it too big might slow down you based on your CPU power so uh, let's let me also save this on a desktop okay let's copy this parameter <coughs> paste it right here rows and columns now for the size I think uh, sticking to a size equal to 10 uh, is okay for now maybe I might want to make this parametric as well so because I need to set the height for the walls as well okay so let's also set the size for the total grid size just gonna use float name this grid size range from 0 to 100 as well Let's set it to 20 as well. Copy this, paste it to right here, and right here. Alright, 
So <clears throat> basically what I want to do is, as I said, uh, try to rotate each of the edge on the grid uh, 90 degrees at some frame with different timing randomly and do it by doing it you'll be able to create animation uh, which seems like creating a maze <clears throat> infinitely so which is pretty kind of easy to do uh, first thing I like to do is to set the normal create the normal uh, direction for each point might not be necessary for this grid but just in case okay set the normal and in order to extract the lines from these cells I'm going to use convert cell uh, no convert line node which you can retrieve the individual lines from a <coughs> grid now what I want to do next is that next thing I would like to do is to separate those lines individually I currently each line is using the same points on each vertex so what I want to do is to make all the points creating those lines be unique meaning I want to have four different points on the corner of this grid so that each line is using the unique points uh, in order for each lines to rotate okay so to do that I can just use facet and then set it to unique points All right now um, in order to make each of the line start to rotate at different frame I'm gonna set some random value for each primitive meaning each lines when to start rotating okay so to do that I am going to create a primitive wrangle and set some initial random values for each primitive <coughs> let me just say start and start okay right now um, what I'm going to do is to create a integer attribute called start and then create a random value using a point position maybe plus some C value if you need then multiply by some <coughs> ranges time range or frame range now the C could be any numbers and the range is used to determine uh, the range from <coughs> if it's zero then the rotation always starts from zero frame if it's if it says like hundred then you are going to multiply this 100 by random values which is in between 0 to 1 so the value the calculation <coughs> will give you a result from 0 to 100 as an integer because I'm uh, storing as an integer attribute so I'm going to use that integer value to determine when to start based on the frame when to start rotating each of those lines okay now I would like to have this value range frame range as a value as an attribute or parameter so going back to the controller I'm going to give that parameter let's name this rand start range and let's set the maximum to 200 might be too big but that's fine and let me also give a random C value so that you can change the randomness so uh, let's say rand seed rand seed range from 0 to 10 is fine now I'm going to give a separator in between those parameters the global parameters and the random 
pattern specific parameters because later on if I have some time I'm going to create some other patterns more geometrical motion graphics slide pattern so thinking, thinking about that I'm going to create a separator and maybe to the bottom as well okay and I'm also going to create a label saying random pattern random pattern okay now let's copy this parameter random seed to this value this channel and <clears throat> and um okay i'm going to copy this parameter rand stat range value to this range all right okay now if i look at the geometry spreadsheet i should be able to see the integer attribute on a primitive type yeah so there is a value called start from 0 to 102 that is because the maximum I set at 103. Now I'll just set it 100 as maximum for now. Right, so everything is ready for preparation. Uh, maybe my voice is a bit too loud. Okay. And let's start using Solver to do the rotation. Should be easy to do <clears throat> okay now first thing i like to do is to uh, set some conditions when to start and when to stop right rotating for each lines and i don't want every lines to start rotating all together because that's going to be too busy some first thing i'm going to do is to create some <clears throat> uh, threshold uh, for random pattern like what percentage of lines should rotate at specific frame right so that's what i want to do okay so let's say primitive i'm going to create a primitive angle okay what's this Uh, I don't know how to hide this. Okay, whoops. Oops. No. Anybody know how to hide this? Uh, I think I pressed some keys which I never used. Ah, uh, forget. Uh, if you know how to hide this, please. Perhaps uh, give me some comments. All right, so what I'm going to do is to pick uh, lines to rotate for this primitive wrangle. <clears throat> right now, um, I'm going to first create a conditions when to start. So I'm going to refer to the frame values, basically. So I'm going to first create a frame equal to or frame and calculate with the modulus and with some specific amount of rotation you want to give for each lines. So say I'm going to name this F count as a parameter for it as an integer. And this value will be used to count. This will be the maximum count, maximum frame count for each line to rotate from zero degrees to 90 degrees or 90 degrees to 180 degrees and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna give it to 15 for initial value. I might want to parameterize this as well later on. And if at frame modulus CHI frame count is equal to zero so every 15 frames 
I would like to choose what uh, lines to rotate. And I'm gonna give another uh, if conditions. I can just concatenate right here, but it's gonna be a bit busy, so I'm gonna create another line. Another condition is inside, and this condition is to pick like uh, some percentage of lines out of every lines to choose which lines to start rotating. So if uh, rand, I'm gonna use random with the um, primitive number as well as just gonna multiply with some time value multiply by some other values and give a threshold I'm gonna I'm just gonna name it as thresh okay as a float value oops all right now it has clashed crushed okay I gotta go back gotta go to uh, save the file that has been crushed okay did I do something wrong maybe okay let me just save this it should be on a desktop okay do you want to know nope. okay this is the one I'm gonna name this maze 2 Okay, let me open up the editor again. Okay, hopefully I don't... <clears throat> it doesn't crash anymore. Okay, now... Do I get any... Process left? Yep, I think so. Okay, I'm still having this window. Wow. Okay, so this threshold act as a to determine what percentage you want to rotate out of these all of these lines. And if I set it to like 0.15, meaning I want to I want to rotate 15% off uh, lines out of all lines which comes which was uh, which is inside this conditions okay so let's set it to one zero point one five for now it should be fine currently I'm not using any start attribute that I have set previously so in this uh, at right now every line is starting to rotate at the same frame but I'm gonna show you how to do that from that first then later on I'm gonna show you how you can <coughs> uh, use the start randomness to control the starting frame for each um, lines okay so after this after you have set the threshold what you want to do is to set a group to the primitive which have gone through these conditions to double conditions so set prim group let's say rotate to the primitive right now I also would like to create a integer attribute called count gonna use uh, in order to determine the current angle so the maximum value for the count will be um, in this case 15 based on this f count Okay, I have this comment saying usually nine keys should enable and disable this panel. Okay, let me try. Oops. Oops. Doesn't seem to change. It should be showing on camera at all in the first place. Right. Well, doesn't seem to change. Well, let me, let me just search for it later on. I'm just gonna go like this. Okay, and 
Next thing I'd like to do is to, what was it? Um, in order to create a rotation uh, during the frame in between when the count is equal to zero until the count becomes 15, I would like to use the the uh, original point position for each lines and I'm going to use some basic like trigonometry or any or maybe some rotational functions to rotate based on the rest positions the original positions so I'm going what I'm going to do now is to retrieve the current point position for each primitive for each lines which in this case you only have two po two points and then uh, store that as a rest position okay uh, maybe select select tool then try all right let me try select tool uh, is this the select tool? Nine. Nope. nope. It does seem to change some values right here, but uh, this panel itself doesn't hide out. Mm, right. Never mind. Okay, now let's also retrieve the point position from the P attribute. I'm gonna name it pos1 for the first point. Pos2 for the second point. Right. <clears throat> now, um, what I'm going to do is to create a rest position for each of the point position 1 and position 2. So I'm gonna call it as rest one for the position one and rest two for the position two. Okay. Now mm, next thing I'd like to do is to create some values uh, in which orientation should rotate, should each line should be rotated clockwise or counterclockwise. Kind of in which order I mean uh, so that could be either like zero, um, 1 or minus 1 I, I guess and I, then I can use that value to multiply the rotational angle so let's create some random values either 1 or minus 1 for as an attribute and use that for the use that to choose which way should it rotate to clockwise or kind of clockwise okay and do, do, do. let's do that by I'm gonna set the attribute as named as ori meaning as orientation create a random value again using primnums with some some random constant value with time with another constant value and if it's less than five then i'm going to store one to orientation integer i mean integer attribute if not if, if it's more than 0.5 then i will give minus one how's that okay now uh next thing i would like to do is to i might need to determine whether the rotation current rotation is at the a current mm, rotation at the horizontal rotation or vertical ro rotation I mean horizontal positions or uh, vertical positions I might not need that well just just in case um so say that the current state for each line is equal to zero and when it rotates to when it rotates 90 degrees then it becomes one then it if it rotates again it becomes zero again 
it's because it's going to be going back to the original positions so let's say the original state is the zero and the rotated state is one so I'm gonna call it as vert meaning as um vertical doesn't really mean and I am going to create as initial value as i one minus i at vert since we're in the solver uh, in the next flame you might have i vert equal to one so in that case you want to make it zero for the next rotational rotation okay uh, thank you all for the comment uh, on the display options tab at the right hand side of the viewport you are looking to switch from the bottom the one above the ABC button. Uh, this one. On the display option top at the right hand side, people, you are looking at switch. To Did it disappear? Display group and attribute list. Hmm. Does it disappear? Not sure. Or am I doing something wrong? I am not really sure. Well, <clears throat> thank you all for the tips. I'm really bad at using UIs. Okay, now I think the in terms of preparation, it's okay. I went to. <laughs> To determine when to start the rotation for each lines so let's check the attribute for each primitive okay for currently i don't have any values set because currently we are starting the assimilations from a frame one and it only activates this only activates when the frame becomes equal to 15. So let's go until 15. Oop. Oh man, again. All right, I think I have some bad luck today. Going back to the crash folder. Sorry for that. I might need to update my Houdini. I'm using 18.5.351 might be not stable yet. Okay. Open this up. Not sure if there is a better way to prevent from crashing. Okay, let's go back. So, <clears throat> it is in preparation. I think it's ready. And what I wanted to do is to prelay it and see until 15 frames and see if the initial state has been set by looking at the geometry spreadsheet primitive okay so i do have count set to zero and orientation set some of the lines being set to one some of the lines set to minus one and some of the orientation are set to zero that means some of uh, those lines has not been activated yet has not been set for the rotation yet the one which has one or either minus one has the rest positions looks good for xyz and the start and the bird and rotate okay so looks good now what I want to do next is to create another uh, primitive wrangle and this time I'm going to use that to actually rotate the line. 
So give a primitive wrangle rotate. Okay. <clears throat> and this time, since I'm going to only rotate the one which is inside the group, uh, group called rotate, I'm gonna set the filter rotate to right here, group filter. Now, <clears throat> let's the first thing I'd like to do is to iterate the count for each primitive by one. Okay, and I'm also going to calculate the value from a count to set it in between 0 to 1 so that it will be easier to use with different purposes. So I'm what I could do is to divide this i uh, count, integer count, with a total frame count. And the total frame count is actually the one set right here. So I can just copy this one. So uh, let's give a channel. Uh, if count is equal to channel if count. And let's copy this channel, paste it right here so that it'll be linked. Now I want to calculate, I want to have a variable called f, which which is going to be in between 0 to 1 based on the count value. Okay, and f count minus 1. Okay, <clears throat> right, so next thing I would like to do is to use this f count to calculate the angle value. So if the count is equal to zero, then the angle will be zero degrees. If the count and if the f is equal to one, then the value is will going to be 90 degrees for the rotation. Okay, so f multiplied by pi multiplied by 0.5 so this is the 90 degrees and multiplied by f which is in between 0 to 1 will give you a value in between 0 to uh, 90 degrees but in radians and I would like to also multiply this with the orientation attribute to determine the the angle uh, orientation whether it should be clockwise or counterclockwise if it's positive it should it's going to be counterclockwise I think and if it's negative it's going to be uh, clockwise right now <clears throat> next thing I would like to do is to uh, reach in order to rotate each point for the primitive what I one way is to retrieve the point from primitive using point print uh, print points right and then uh, get the position for each point but the one that I'm going to retrieve is not the current point positions because it it might be on the way to rotate at some uh, directions. What I want to retrieve here is the rest positions. So uh, that that is going to be v at rest one for the point position one. Okay, let me open up the editor. And let me save this. Okay, and vector position two v at rest two. All right. And I might also want to retrieve the normal direction, which I'm going to use it for the rotational axis. In this case, the grid, it's, I'm just using a flat grid, so it always faced, the normal is always facing upward to the y direction, but in case you're using some more angulated, <coughs> like wavy plane, you might want to have this 
value. Okay, so vector gnome one is v for this one I have to retrieve from each of the point I think so I can do that by point zero n at pts zero vector known two point zero okay should work now uh, so what I'm going to do is to rotate this line using the center point as an axis axis center point for the rotation and rotate either clockwise or kind of clockwise by 90 degrees so uh, first thing I need is the center point positions which is in between position 1 and position 2 of the rest positions so let's calculate that and pos is equal to position 1 plus position 2 multiplied by 0.5 <clears throat> and I could also calculate the average normal for in between normal 1 and normal 2 so just in case I mean not really necessary but I'll just do it okay and maybe I would like to normalize this as well for the normals which might not be necessary and in this case I don't need to multiply by 0.5 okay now it's the time to actually create a rotation and do the rotation uh, I'm going to create a rotational matrix by starting by creating an ident matrix then use the rotate function to create the rotational matrix using the angle which comes from here with the axis uh, normal, normal that I have created which in this case should be y direction <coughs> y axis okay now and right after I created the matrix I need to rotate each of the point position 1 and position 2 but I cannot just uh, mul multiply this by matrix I need to first um, move the each of the point with the middle point positions then I can start mul uh, rota rotating the position with the rotation matrix that I've created now after doing it, I can bring this back to the by adding the middle position, middle point positions. Same for the second point. Do the same thing. Okay, apply, save. <clears throat> okay, so after this. Mm. what I would like to do is to set uh, update the point position update the current point positions with this one and this one so set or yeah set point attrib p at pts0 for the position 1 and set point attrib 0 PTS one position two. Okay, now let's see if the lines is going to rotate. Now I haven't set the random start attribute yet, but let's see if it's going to work or not. Now I am seeing some caches here. Alright, that's not good. In order to Sometimes it happens. In this case, I'm going to reopen the file. All right now, let's see. I play it. Okay. Wow, it's really busy. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to do is to um, set a condition. After you have rotated, then you want to stop it. All right, you want to stop for the to wait for the next 
uh, conditions to break in. So in order to do that, I need to set the group rotation to zero after it has been rotated fully. So need to that in, it, in order to do that, I need to make another conditions. If the rotation has been completed, meaning if I um, <coughs> if count is equal to I count, in this case plus one, then set grim group rotate rim to zero <coughs> so that after it has been rotated the group is going to be reset at to zero uh, for the rotation then we can wait another frames to start the lines to rotate okay in just in case I'm going to reset the count as well which I'm doing it right here on the first primitive wrangle but just in case okay now let's see what would happen okay well okay something's wrong it's rotating weirdly pretty weird uh, that's not what I intended let's see what it's where it is wrong Okay, alright. Oh, I needed to say equal equal. Huh. Okay, looks good. And as you can see, all of those lines, I mean, some of the selected lines are starting to rotate at the same timing, which might be good for some cases, might be not interesting that much. So I'm gonna add a random starting uh, I'm gonna use this random starting value that I have set it right here I add start to uh, differentiate the timing when to start rotating for each lines okay to do that it's pretty easy going back to this uh, first primitive wrangle open up the editor what I would like what I'm going to do is to add the I add start attribute to the frame to <coughs> uh, activate this condition when to start rotating and that is all you need to do and as a result you'll be able to have more organic timing for each line to start rotating right so the base is already set it like this this is what I uh, intended to show you um, pretty easy to do so let's promote some of the parameters that I have set something like the total frame count and the threshold for the randomness so going back to the edit parameter interface for the controller going to uncheck for a bit linking parameters from outside going back and I'm going to drag and drop the values so the frame count the total frame count could be a global variable group of uh, parameters so I'm gonna give it on top of the separator and then let's say mm, <coughs> rotation frame count frame count let's set the range from 0 to 100 and the threshold is I'm gonna call it as <coughs> pick rand threshold pick and threshold and gonna give it the range from 0 to 1 it's fine right now let's try to change some parameters to see the differences um, let's say if I set the um, <clears throat> pick random threshold to like one which will choose all the lines to rotate if you don't want that you can reduce it to choose the less lines ok 
Okay, interesting. Now, for the rotation frame count, if you increase this, you'll get a slower rotation using 30 frames to rotate 90 degrees. Like this, if you set it to 5, you have more faster rotation, which might also be interesting. Now, I do see some um, problem right here. When I change the frames in between the frame, in, when I change the parameters in between the frames, I see that uh, the, this thing's okay, but oh yeah, right, this one, it stopped at some irregular angle. Uh, that is because I have changed the parameter in between some of the frame. So it lost where to stop, when to stop. So in order to avoid having this kind of irregular angle by changing those kind of parameters between the frames when running the solver, uh, one thing I could do is to give a conditions to the first frame, only activate this when the primitive group is not inside rotate. So if the rotate group is the value of the rotate group is equal to zero, then I can run this. I can assure that the line has stopped rotating, then go to the next step. So <clears throat> if in prim group zero rotate prim num is equal to zero then you can start setting for the next rotation and this way i think i'll be able to change the parameters in between the frames while running the frames okay let's do that if i change this to and i think seems Problem, problem is gone now. Okay, now let's try to visualize this at 3D so that it looks like a maze as I intended to show. <clears throat> okay, which so is going to be just, I um, mean, nothing special here. What I'm going to do is just use the poly extrude. Which line to first ex extrude in y direction, in this case a point normal direction, which I have set it right here. So I want to set it to point normal, existing, and maybe I can parameterize this value as well. So let's go back to the parameter, say height. From 0 to say 5. Copy this, paste it right here. Might be too high. Well, okay. And if I play it, start to get more interesting. Right, so I might also want to have some thickness f to each of the lines, each of the walls for better looks. So let's do that uh, by using another poly extrude, poly extrude. And <clears throat> this time I'm going to use a default settings with just adding some thickness to the distance and I'll put back. Now there is a bit of problem right here because um, when you rotate you'll see why. See there's some gap right here that is because um, this extrude has been extruded from one side but there is no walls on the other side so what I want to do is to offset this backward a little bit or half size of the thickness in this case, 0.1. So let's have this thickness as an add parameter as well. OK, 
Okay, so going to back. Let's give a parameter thickness. Thickness from zero to one. Set it to point one. Copy. Copy this. And paste right here. Okay, now in order to offset this, I guess there's many ways to do it, but let's just do it using Rango again. Might be too expensive, I mean, in terms of writing the code, but uh, as a practice. Okay, so I'm gonna name it offset. And what I'm going to do is to first retrieve the normal direction of each primitive which I think can be retrieved by accessing to a at n, I think, at n, will produce the automatically produced normals for each faces. So I'm going to use that to move each point backward, uh, back side of this normal direction by the half size of the thickness. So first thing I like to have the thickness value I'm just gonna call it T. Okay. And copy the thickness attribute parameter <clears throat> to here. Okay. Oop. Really? Okay. I think I'm having a bug luck today. This is the third time having an error. Oof. Okay. And I'm glad I have saved it. Okay. I'm gonna name it maze four. sure what causes the crash. Cannot really figure out. One thing is sure, you need to save it frequently for this version. All right. Um, now I'm back. Um, yeah, I have copied, pasted the thickness. Now what I needed to do is to retrieve the point from each primitive, in this case uh, each faces. So prim points, prim points. And loop through each of the point to move. the point position okay now <clears throat> update the position by uh, subtracting using the normal direction which should be the length of one so multiply by the thickness multiply by 0.5 and then update the point position using set point attrib and I think the face has been offset it to a negative direction of this plane of this surface primitive normal direction then if I do the extrusion again and if I do the rotation to check the problem should be gone. Right, looks good. Now, one more thing I could fix, which might not be necessary, but to fix this one right here. 
I mean, having an overlap is fine, but uh, having this kind of edge is not that pretty. So what I could do is to ex extend the length of each wall, wall by the half size of the thickness on the light side and the left side, left side to make it look like a scratch. Okay, so <clears throat> for that one, I could do right before going to the soft solver somewhere around here. If you really want to do that, but I want to do that, so I'll do that. Okay, so <clears throat> let's do that by. I mean, there could. Um, well, I'll just do. I'll just use another primitive wrangle because I cannot think of a better way to do with the uh, node functions there might be a function uh, there might be a node to do that in order to extend the lines at specific lengths but I'm not sure what to use okay I'm gonna name it thickness extend and first of all I need a thickness value okay copy this thickness paste it right here okay now <clears throat> uh, for this one this is just a line and uh, what I want to do is to extend the edge by a half size of thickness so it should be pretty easy I what I'm going to do is pretty similar to what I did in order to offset the surface so let's just copy paste some of the code right here okay so until then until here this is fine and get the positions it's okay so there is no such thing as normal I mean there is a normal direction but it's facing the direction where I want to move is a bit different so forget about this one and <clears throat> What I want to do is for this point to move this way, for this line and this point to move this way. Okay, so maybe I can scale this point using the middle point position as the base. How's that? Okay, and the middle position can be retrieved by accessing to an add P, which is pretty convenient. So, right. <clears throat> Well, first thing I could do is to calculate the distance between the point and the at P which is the middle point so float distance okay and the target distance will be distance plus thickness multiplied by 0.5 right so from this two values I can create a scale value by dividing t distance target distance by a current distance and I can use this scale to uh, change the position the current position now in order to scale I need to do a similar thing that I did for the rotation first I need to subtract this current position with a center point which is at P and then multiply by s to scale up and then give it back to the point position to the middle position okay and as a result all the lines should be extended by set point uh, to rev at pt with this position okay let's check right so i see the those points right here being extended i should i think it should it has been extended correctly now going back to the wall and starting from the single frame this first frame to see the animations and if I see the corner has been fixed okay okay so I mean it is overlapped but at least you have a clean corner 
if you want to prevent the overlapping as well, then you need to, I mean, make it a more more detail <coughs> uh, for the corner. But I'm I'm not gonna do that. It's gonna take some time to do. All right, so currently the normal of this face is a bit corrupted, so okay, let's fix that by using normal. Okay, looks clean now. Now I'm going to merge this with a plane, I mean the ground, to finish up the random pattern maze. Okay, now this one also needs some normal. Okay, looks good. Now let's also color this. <coughs> using some different color for the ground and the wall uh, okay all right now let's try sunning okay now looks good looks working you can control the timing as well i mean by re uh, reducing this random start range for example from to zero you get the same timing for each <coughs> walls to start rotating you can also reduce the number of walls to rotate this one is just changing the seed so it doesn't really see the change cannot really see the changes um, you can also slow down the rotation by doing this. Other stuff is just changes the way it looks. Okay, <clears throat> now these are the one that I initially wanted to show you in order to create the randomly flipping, randomly rotating walls. Now. <clears throat> I'm not sure if anybody is listening. If anybody is listening and it's still interested, I could try to do some other pattern different than the random one. Make it more geometrically, <coughs> geometrical pattern, geometrical like mm, mathematical rotation, mathematical like patterns. <coughs> if anybody's wanted. If not, I'm gonna end this at this. Point. Okay, I guess people is not here anymore. Then let's just end this, shall we? All right. <clears throat> okay, thank you for the comment. Um, okay, well, seems like some people are still... Okay. Oh, I have a comment no as well. Okay, so let's see how I do that. Um, I don't know how much it's gonna take maybe 30 more minutes or could be uh, one hour or not <clears throat> but if you are still on then maybe I could show I, I don't like this color so let me change this to something different first uh, okay well <clears throat> so the so this was the random pattern which works okay but the next thing I would like to show you is to create more mathematical pattern more like um say could be anything but maybe I could try to create some uh, walls being flipping like away from some center but some point set as a center like starting this point as a center then create a ripple like pattern going from the center to outward 
to start rotating. Okay, so let's try to see how we could do that by uh, adding some extensions to this setup that I've just created. Okay, so first of all, in order to separate the random pattern and the second pattern, I'm going to create another additional parameter called pattern to choose either random pattern or a mathematical pattern. Okay, so 0 or 1. So when it's 0, I'm going to choose random. If it's 1, I'm going to choose mathematical. Okay. Right. Now, <clears throat> I would like to add a one point, one single point, as a starting point for the mathematical uh, ripple-like pattern and like for this point to be able to move around this plane so <clears throat> maybe I could just create it at single point right here name this PT and I'm gonna give this point to a second input to this solver okay and maybe <clears throat> I can con have some parameter to control the position of this point I'm not sure if I if that's necessary but let's do that okay so let's give a float vector 3 and center pulse and gonna copy this parameter to right here and let's change this value to some random values and where is it right now right here okay right so from this point I'm going to create some ripple like pattern based on the one based on the setup that I've created instead of using the random <clears throat> right now um, I might also want to uh, have uh, additional parameter for the uh, this mathematical pattern one thing is to have a similar uh, parameter which is which I was using for the random was called as random start range but I might also want some similar parameter for the second pattern as well so let's have that let's name this mm, mm, math start range oh. The difference is that I'm going I'm not going to use this for the randomness but I'm going to use it for some gradational value. I'm gonna show you how what I mean later. From range from zero to hundred, right? Now let's do with this. Okay, and I'm gonna set it to fifty for now copy this and going inside the solver to actually actually write uh, what I need to do <clears throat> okay so what I'm going to do first is to create a switch node to um, let's say let's say connect with this one and for the switch input I'm going to use this pattern copy press parameter paste it right here and I'm gonna duplicate this node and connect it to the second input for the switch so when the pattern becomes one 
then this one will be chosen. And for this one, I'm going to change this into a mathematical um, pattern specific uh, values. Now, the position, I mean, the the code that's determined whether it should be random or mathematical or some geometrical is it's this one. It's this first node and the second node is just to use the attribute set previously to rotate, actually rotate the line. So I, I don't think I need to change this one, but I what I just need to do is to set the conditions for uh, when to start and how it should be rotated, like in what direction, randomly or not. Okay, well, thank you for the comment. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to name this pick. Mm. Let's name this mm, pick mathematically and this one to rename this to pick randomly okay now for the pick mathematically one I'm going to bring up the point that I've connected to the second input for the solver so I'm gonna connect this to the second input right here okay and I'm going to revise the code so that it works as uh, <clears throat> mathematical conditions right so let's do that I'm going to open up the code editor and write up the code to see uh, what I can do okay so first of all mm, what I could do is to retrieve the point position from the second input which was this one right so give a space vector a pos meaning as attractor point a point first uh, second input p0 since there is only one point now i think you'll be able to do this with multiple points but i'm gonna do it the single point for now right now <clears throat> Next thing I would like to do is to calculate the distance between this center point, which is somewhere around here, and each of the primitive center point, which is at P. And I'm going to use that distance to determine when to rotate based on the distance with some like sine wave function <clears throat> together with the time value. Okay, sounds like a way to go okay so distance can be retrieved between the point current point position I mean current primitive center position between the attractor point position and let's also determine the step for the wave okay so the wave is in between 0 degree to 360 degrees here right so let's determine that by a distance so if if i set the distance 5 as a maximum distance then uh, the distance between 0 to 5 will be used for one wave one single wave single frequency and another 5 the distance between 5 to 10 will create another wave from 0 to 360 degrees Okay, so to do that I need to set some um, threshold or a maximum distance for a single frame to convert this distance to, to an, an angle so that I can use it for a sine wave. So let's name this max distance and let's have that as a parameter, max dist. Promote this, apply, promote, save. And currently the plane size is around 10, so let's set it to 5 for now as a single wave um, uh, distance. Okay, and 
next thing I like to do is to um, calculate the value for the distance so I want to convert this distance into a value in between 0 to 1 which is possible uh, by first of all uh, calculate the modulus with the max distance so that if the distance is greater than the max distance then it will if this is if this is 6 and the max distance is 5 then what you get is 1 uh, and so on you you get some <coughs> um, how do I say this kind of wave using a modulus and we can use that wave in order to convert it into an angle and as a result you'll be able to get a smooth weight all right so and after this you can divide this by a max distance to retreat value in between 0 to 1 well not exactly 1 because you won't get a value 1 with this equations but you get really close value so that's fine okay now I gotta make sure that the max distance is full value because I'm dividing okay now what else all right now after this I could <clears throat> create the conditions which was using in order to determine when to start the rotation and I, I think I need this in primitive group rotate is equal to zero so let's keep that and the next one this is for the randomness so I can change this first of all I don't I should not use this I start because that's for the random that that was the random value that I've created previously so let's remove this and chi f count to two right so let's try to keep this as it is for now meaning all the lines start at the same frame for now but I'm gonna change it later okay the next thing the this condition using the random is not necessary so I'm gonna remove that condition okay okay so <clears throat> what I'm going to do next is to calculate the angle the um, create an angle value from this D value right here so as I said the D is in between 0 to 1 and if, if the distance becomes more than max distance then it starts from 0 again and creates some um, how do I say more that kind of straight line wave like this one Okay, so we could convert that into an angle by <coughs> float ang is equal to um, d multiply by um, pi multiply by 2. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I think that's it. Uh, let me think. Let me think if that's correct. Um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe not. Well, I could try. Okay, so let's say this is correct and well, currently I'm not using time value, so I guess I need to add some time value to this t d value somewhere like this, either positive or negative. I think by using negative will spread from center to outward. If I make it positive, then it's going to be from outward to center. Well, either way, it's fine, but I'm going to go with the center to outward. Okay, and currently. I cannot control the speed of the wave so 
let's multiply the time with some speed value speed parameter okay I have some errors maybe too many parentheses okay promote and I'm not sure what the best value for the speed so I'm gonna keep it as one for now save it okay hopefully I don't lose the files anymore mm. okay now after I get the angle what I could do is to calculate the sine wave since the the angle should be in between 0 to 360 degrees in radians I can just use sine values float sine ang and using this value I could create a condition so the value after using the sine functions the value you get is in between minus 1 to positive 1 so I can create a condition if the value is like in between minus 1 to 1 so if the value is more than 0.5 then start rotation and that way using this kind of conditions oops right using this kind of condition you can choose some part of the sine wave to start rotating and other stuff is pretty much the same I think setting the primitive rotate to 1 that's fine I count to 0 that's good this is all good this is all good for this one I guess I don't want to use any randomness so I can just say 1 or minus 1 it's just a 1 I can just delete this and I think I can keep this as it is as it is I mean I think I'm not using this value after all so I can just delete it okay now let's see what would happen with this hopefully something interesting happens let's try with the line first Play it. Nothing happens. Oop. Oh, it did happen. Okay, the starting value, starting frame was a bit slow. This one. Let's set it to 15. Okay, it's going. Is it going inward or outward? Seems like it's going inward. All right. In that case, I can set the angle <clears throat> for the, the time to positive and currently the wave distance I mean there's too many waves I see right here maybe three waves so that can be controlled using this uh, changing this max distance so let's set it to 10 to make the distance between the uh, top of the wave to be have more uh, distance okay let's see how it goes all right I think it's working it seems like the speed is a bit too fast hmm it's moving too fast I think so let's set the speed to point 0.1 to see the difference huh. okay I think I need to reset it reset the solver uh, actually it's going inward so previously it was too fast to see that it looks like it was going outward but actually it was going inward all right so let's set it to negative again for the time 
And let's set the speed to 0 0.2. 0 0.2. And actually, if you set the speed to negative value, then you can change the the direction where the wave should go from inward to outward or outward to inward. Okay, let's check. Better, looks better. Now, the next thing I like to uh, solve is that uh, when rotating each of the lines, you see that uh, all the lines are rotating at the same uh, timing. The, t the line that had been chosen to be rotated. That's not really interesting, is it? So I, I want to change that. And there, there's that's the place where I can use this math start range. So I'm going to copy this parameter, going back to the solver, and let's um, have that parameter. Uh, there is actually a name called start range. No, actually not. Okay, I'm gonna create a parameter called start start range. And paste parameter that I have moved, copied. Okay, so this 50. So I wanna use this value 50 in order to control the starting frame, which it can be controlled right here as we did for the random <clears throat> so we need to have some values added to this frame uh, based on this start range together with this D value so what I could do I could just say mm, let's say I Let's try to create another values like ds is equal to d multiply by start. <coughs> range. So <coughs> as a result, you'll be able to get a gradational value between 0 to 50 based on the distance using this as a maximum value and adding this ds to the frame you'll be able to get a bit more gradational um, rotational rotation starting frame the starting timing I hope okay let's see that should be it go back start rotating all right looks interesting start to get more interesting and start to create some interesting pattern as well if I set it to center point position which can be controlled right here center going to center going to center okay let's start from scratch all right nice some interesting pattern has been pr provided I mean produced created like it okay and you can control okay well it's time to promote some of the parameters that I set for this pattern going back so there is additional two parameters right here and some of the parameters is not being used anymore like F count and threshold so let's delete that as well I'm going to delete F count threshold and then I'm going to bring these two parameters back to the controller speed and the max distance uh, anything else let me check um, <clears throat> so I'm controlling the time that's fine yep everything else looks fine to me nothing really here to be able to parameterize I guess or maybe this one either right uh, counterclockwise or clockwise I mean if I make it negative 
it should rotate to the other direction which doesn't really make any changes visual wise so it doesn't really matter or maybe at some frame I can change this change this value iteratively based on the frame so maybe parameterizing might make sense so let's do that okay so I have three parameters and going back right here controller D D D D uh, so just going to drag and drop to bring up again so uncheck for a bit linking going back to the solver again since I have a separator right here for the second pattern let's also label have some label to name this mathematical pattern all right and drag and drop max distance what was this for it's for the angle distance okay so mm, mm, how do i name this step distance uh, it's a bit hard to understand what it's mean what it means speed straightforward wave speed Wave speed 0 to 1. The distance is from 0 to mm, 30. Okay, f count. What's f count? I think I don't need f count. Do we? Oh, here it is. Okay, I needed the frame count. Oops, I deleted that. Okay, for that one, I can just copy and paste this one back to here okay so I can also have the orientation value which should be either minus one or one but if I make a slider I'll get also a zero so that might be a problem okay so in that case eh, is there a way to change the step value for the sliders I'm not sure, maybe not. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it as an integer from 0 to 1. Then set the, set this to orientation. Orientation. And then <clears throat> apply. And then here I'm going to say if CHI orientation is equal to zero, then give minus one. If not, one. How's that? Should work. Okay. How is this concept? Go back. Now it's time to check all sorts of parameters. One thing to change the center positions all right it's working now you can also change the max uh, math start range make it bigger you have more gradation more slower gradation seem to work if I set it to zero you have all the lines to start at the exact same frame which is more mechanical Okay, uh, right, what else? Uh, stop, step distance, so I can change the wave length. If I set it to 20, each wave will have a longer wave. That is also interesting. Right, let's set it to something right here. Okay, and speed, if I set it to bigger speed, it's going faster, I set it to slower, if I set it smaller, it gets slower, 
And if I make it the negative value, it should go inward. Ooh, nope, not really. Ah, that was too big. 0.2. All right. Looks good. So I guess I need to set the range from minus 1 to 1 for the speed. That makes sense. Oh. Hey, thank you, Katima, for the super chat. Okay. And orientation, currently it's 1, but if I set it to 0, then I can change the, the orientation. Well, it's not really visible. It's not really easy to see whether which way it's rotating. Well, okay, now <clears throat> what could be interesting at this point, I mean, um, you could change those parameters interactively I think to change the pattern I mean I'm not sure about the positions is it yeah it's also changing so let's say um, you could for example change oh. um, could, for example, change the speed using a sine wave based on a time. This T time was it? I'm gonna use F and multiply by ten. Multiply by point three. Okay, it does show some something like a dancing pattern, but I'm not not really seeing some interesting pattern here. I'm gonna reset it to constant value. Orientation might be okay. I mean, you could also change the pattern itself randomly, like starting from the mathematical but suddenly it becomes random and go back to the constant mathematical it works just fine yeah nice All right so enough with playing the parameters let's also see it on 3d jump and check this out all right doesn't really look like a maze anymore but uh showing some interesting animations right here and i realized i forgot to promote one additional parameter which is to which is for thresholding the determine the conditions for the height of the wave okay for the mathematical pattern which was which was this one right here I can parameterize this as well so let's say mm, wave fresh and I'm just gonna copy one of the parameter and name it as wave fresh hold so I'm going to create exactly same name to this controller F float let's choose float and let's name this wave threshold and could be in between minus one to one okay as a result if I set it to zero, you have a lot of, I mean, exactly half of the wave to be shown, to be used for the rotation, because the sine wave is in between minus one to one. Okay, but, and if I set it to minus one, then all the lines will be used for the rotation. 
and give some this is also interesting in this case I can change this starting range to control the gradations yep yeah yep yeah. interesting okay well but basically what I wanted to do is to set the wave threshold more than zero to show this kind of a <clears throat> ripple like effect okay going back to the random alrighty so <clears throat> that's what I wanted to show you this time what I wanted to show you this week to create some to create a maze using a simple soft solver operations the mathematical pattern is a bit more complex than the random one but uh, using the same concept using the similar con uh, technique you can do all sorts of mathematical like animations so try to do that if you're interested <clears throat> Okay, um, let me know if you guys have any questions. If not, I would like to end here. And as always, thank you all for the comment. It's really great to have all. Okay. Um, let me check if I have anything else to do. Well, there's no questions, then I would like to end here. Okay, and um, <clears throat> as always, I will be posting the file that I've created um, to a GitHub page, a GitHub repo, which can be download from the page linked in the video description of this YouTube video I haven't updated yet I am going to update it uh, after I have finished this live uh, you can download the file to check what I have written to play out play it out play out with your <coughs> interest Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna do the other, another Houdini live sessions next week at the same time at 9 p.m. in Japan time. Yeah. Okay, so good night. Good night to you all. It's 11 p.m. in Japan. It's time to go to bed. Right. Okay. Good night, all. <clears throat>